Hey everyone, this is Jonas with Accuracy, and welcome back to Accuracy Home Practice. This time around we're gonna take a look at Hurricanes and Funnels, as requested by our user Josa 3 d And we are here with the Oxy5 Meg on the disused runway of Lee on Solent Field. Also by popular request, I have now displayed two transmitters in the bottom right hand corner. The top one is mode 1, the bottom one is mode 2 as you can see by the emotions when I do a pyro move. So let's take a look at what a speed, uh, yeah I, I also call it speed circle but the majority of people call it hurricane, what it actually looks like. So obviously you want to know how to fly a circle with your helicopter and then you just take that circle to the extreme. A hurricane really just is a circle flown at very high collective and very high speed. And of course you can do hurricanes forward, you can do hurricanes backward, you can do hurricanes inverted, backward and forward. And since we're also doing funnels today, let's take a look at what a funnel looks like. Because a funnel is somewhere in between a basic circle and a hurricane in terms of inclination. But the thing about the funnel is that we are actually having the nose or the tail point towards the center of the circle. You can do this upright. You can do this inverted. This, for example, would be an inverted counterclockwise tail down funnel. If we are very specific, we can also do it nose down. We can also do it pirouetting. So, yeah, let's take a look at how to actually get into these maneuvers. And I would say we, will, we should start with the hurricane because that's really not that hard. All you want to know how to do is to fly a circle with your helicopter so give it a bit of roll then bring it around with elevator and rudder by coupling elevator and rudder you're essentially having the helicopter do a coordinated turn where the um, Nose always follows the direction of travel by tail input and elevator brings it around in a circle. And once you can do that, you can probably bring up your RPM a bit to aid collective lift. Increase your collective to make the helicopter go faster. Increase the inclination into the circle of the rotor disc to cater for increased centripetal force that's required. Give it more elevator to bring it around. Your rudder input needs to be smaller the steeper your rotor is, so if it was perfectly vertical, which we obviously cannot do because the lift vector would not allow for it, uh, you would pretty much not be giving any tail input anymore. Same goes for, for inverted. Once you know how to fly a circle, just give it more collective, make it steeper, and you are flying an inverted hurricane. The thing about the hurricane is that you're flying at a very high speed with a very steep inclination of the disc. So the helicopter may become pitchy if it's not set up right. And the helicopter may snap around on you if you're flying very agile and unstable blades, for example, old radix stick bangers. I could never get these to do high speed flying properly. So uh, be wary of that and also do not go too steep on the inclination because if you... Oh, that's my battery. Uh, let's reset real quick. Do not go too steep on the inclination because... Oh look, Zane is playing Street Fighter. <laughs> um, if you go too steep on the inclination you will lose lift. As I shall demonstrate right now and I will crash. 
So let's go very steep. Yeah, cannot hold it with collective even though I was at full collective there. So that is unfortunate. Um, also make sure you keep the same inclination of the disc during the hurricane. Otherwise your helicopter may climb out because you're essentially holding a balance between lift, centripetal force and rotor thrust to the center and gravity. What determines your uh, up and down movement is mainly aileron because that tweaks how much lift you're getting from your rotor. So you can see me rolling slightly into the circle if I want to go down or slightly out of the circle if I want to go up. You can also practice this in a bit of a flatter attitude to give yourself a bit more time to think. You will need less collective because you need less centripetal force for the slower speed and you will need less collective for the same lift. But it gives you a good starting point for bringing the disc close to vertical from a normal circle basically. And the nice thing about this is you can do it in all orientations. So, want to do it upright? Sure. Want to do it tail first? Sure. And then just push it a little steeper, push it a little faster when you get more confident. And that should be how you get into a hurricane. The other thing we wanted to look at would be funnels. So, a funnel pretty much is the same concept that we did with the hurricane, just that the nose or tail will face the center. And it's not usually not as fast because a helicopter has a lot of side drag from its large side profile. So the idea here is that we can go kind of steep, but not full collective steep, ideally. And then just, they also called it pie dish back in the day, it's because um, the helicopter is essentially lining the outside of a pie dish with its slightly slanted border. And that's the motion we're trying to achieve that you're seeing here. Um, if you remember from the corkscrew tutorial, we can also do this in place. And... I'm guessing this is a bit backwards now, but the funnel basically is the origin of the corkscrewing motion. And let's take a look at how to get into this. Um, what I like to do when I first started flying is to pick a direction in upright flying, which I am comfortable with. For example, a right rudder circle upright that's flown clockwise. And then I essentially just flew sideways, gave it some elevator, and started bringing it, ar bringing it around with the aileron and rudder. Just like you would do uh, with the elevator and rudder in a normal circle. So, once you can fly a normal circle, the control inputs for a funnel are really just 90 degrees shifted on the cyclic. So, you're bringing it around with aileron instead of elevator. And there goes my battery again. And you always want to keep the nose of the helicopter down or up, depending on the orientation, uh, by leading it with the rudder. Here also, as described er earlier in the hurricane, your uh, inclination determines your altitude, so if I lay it flatter, it will climb, if I put it steeper, it will fall. And I need a new battery, so let's reset again. I should have disabled battery emulation, but whatever. <laughs> Well, once you are comfortable with this method of entering a funnel, you can also do some fancier stuff with it. For example, you can just turn the tail from any circle you like.
or you can do some fancier entries, for example, here's a favorite of mine. The idea for entering a funnel is just that you need to get some speed and then bring it into the funnel orientation to start the funneling motion. There really is not much to it, it's just that you need to visualize what direction of aileron and rudder you need for the specific funnel you want to fly. So, inverted funnels for example, for a counterclockwise tail down funnel you need right rudder right aileron, for a nose down counterclockwise funnel you need right rudder left aileron, you can pretty much always derive the direction of the funnel you want to fly from a circle. Just imagine that you turn the tail 90 degrees for that funnel. And once you're comfortable with two funnels, you can, for example, do a little transition between them. You can also do a rolling funnel, which is pretty much a funnel where you are rolling along. Um, while it does not have much to do with the control inputs for a standard funnel, it's still a derivative of that, and if I will take you there. Um, you can of course do a pirouetting funnel where the helicopter is constantly pirouetting. You can also slow that down to make it prettier. Um, this really is just a combination of all funnels, so if you can do a funnel tail down, a funnel nose down, and fly the respective circle tail first and nose first. You can just start pirouetting and interpolating between the control inputs of the various funnels and circles that you already know. Uh, you can also do this in steps, for example, fly backwards, switch the nose to forward, switch the nose to nose down funnel, switch the nose to tail down funnel, forward, backward, forward, tail down, nose down, and at some point you should be able to just pirou constantly and bring it around in a funnel. Uh, what else can we do with that? We can do a funneling funnel. Uh, I guess this was called a waltz back in the 3D Masters days where you modulate your collective to fly four funnels within a larger funnel. So you can see I'm backing off the collective for these smaller funnels and giving a bit tighter aileron. And then I'm increasing the collective to bring it to the next funnel location and relaxing a bit on the aileron to get the radius up. Uh, you can, as mentioned, also do it in place, which is then called a twirly or I don't know, that's at least what Mikado called it in 2012. You can give it more rudder input and it becomes that maneuver that some people like to do where the helicopter just manically spins in place. Um, you can mm, intentionally make your funnels climb. You can intentionally make them fall by going a bit steeper on the inclination and backing off the collective. Funnels really are a very versatile maneuver. You can do a lot of stuff with them. Um, if you can do funnels, you can do corkscrews. My battery is about to go out. Um, we also have a separate tutorial for corkscrews. As you can see, this is basically a sideways funnel that's held in the air by collective inputs, which are alternating. And to end this video, let's do an auto rotation. Uh, let me see my RPM. Let's see if we can do a funneling auto. So, switch it off and bring it around in a funnel, more or less, not really building RPM on that one. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little video explaining how to go in depth with funnels and hurricanes, and see you next time.